Hello, it's been a hot minute since we've last sat down and ran some good old fashioned numbers. And today, we're covering what seems to be the most highly requested of all number crunches, damage per second. Specifically, covering the scout and his many guns. But before we dive headfirst into this, I want to establish two different types of damage that we will be covering, namely, burst and sustained DPS. And this is really simple. Burst DPS simply refers to the damage our weapons can pump out before factoring in those pesky reload speeds. But because this heavily favors faster firing weapons like the Force of Nature, we will also be looking at sustained DPS, which gives us a little bit more realistic numbers by factoring in reload speeds as well. Pretty simple really, but I do want to leave a quick disclaimer here before we start. This video is not meant to say that any one weapon is better than another, simply because its numbers are bigger. Everything in here is considering perfect conditions and no human error. So let's jump right into it with the scout's primaries, starting out with the scattergun. And for the sake of convenience, the equations used to produce our numbers will be on screen here for the stock scattergun, but as we go on things will be simplified to keep things rolling. If you want to see a complete breakdown for each weapon, there's a link in the description to a spreadsheet with all of the numbers your heart desires. But back to the scattergun. Now our stock primary here deals a max of 104 damage at point blank range, and with an attack interval of 5 eighths of a second, gives it a burst DPS of 166.4. Alright, simple enough. Now if we were to factor in the total amount of shots, so 6, as well as the weapon's most efficient reload speed, gives us a sustained DPS of 85.3. Now, this will serve as a good baseline moving forward. In fact, the Babyface's blaster, as well as the backscatter, share the scattergun's burst DPS of 166, but both have a slightly lower sustained DPS of 84.2. And this is simply due to these weapons having a less efficient reload. But still on the topic about the backscatter, let's consider its damage while it's benefiting from its mini crit boost as well. To put it simply, this will increase both its burst and its sustained DPS by 34%, bringing them up to 224 and 113 damage per second respectively. That's some pretty impressive damage. But if we want to see the kings of burst damage, then let's turn our attention to our double barreled primaries. Now, the Force of Nature and the Soda Popper fire almost twice as fast as the previously mentioned weapons, so while their damage may not be much higher, or at all in the case of the Soda Popper, their burst DPS is much higher, with the Force of Nature putting out 358 damage per second, while the Soda Popper is a little behind with 330 DPS. But it overtakes the fan when it comes to sustained damage because of its faster reloads. The fan puts out 99 sustained DPS, while well, the Soda Popper takes the crown with 111 damage per second. And finally, the primary pistol itself, the Shortstop. This weapon has a rather quick rate of fire, as well as decent damage output, giving it a burst DPS of an even 200, not bad. And when it comes to sustained damage, it's not too shabby either. Reloading all its shots at once gives it a significant advantage and a sustained DPS of 97, just one below the force of nature. And with that, that's all of our primary weapons covered. As you can see, the weapons that can reload all of their shots at once tend to have higher damage numbers, while the guns that reload shots one at a time don't look as impressive until you factor in the Backscatter's mini crit buff, which gives it just the slightest edge over the Soda Popper when it comes to sustained damage. Now let's take a peek into the Scout's secondary arsenal. This will be a bit quicker, as there's only three weapons we really need to look at here, and they're all pretty similar. I'm talking about the pistol, the winger, and the pretty boy's pocket pistol. We're going to do all of these together now, so let's start out with our burst DPS across the board. First thing to note is that the pistol and the pocket pistol share the same burst DPS of 129, as there's no variance in damage or firing speed between these two guns. The winger, however, does deal extra damage, boosting it up to 152 damage per second. But if we shift our gaze over to sustained damage, we're going to see some different numbers. With our stock pistol having a DPS of 80.2, and because of its smaller magazine size, the pocket pistol and winger drop off hard, with 71 and 61 damage per second respectively between them. And that's all we really have to cover with secondaries. 
Not a whole lot going on here, but it is interesting how much the smaller clip size would affect these weapons damage output in the long run, even with the winger doing more damage per shot. But finally, we're gonna quickly go over. And this is gonna be a real speed round. Important note before we start though, every scout melee weapon swings every half second. So finding their damage per second is really as easy as doubling their damage per swing. There's also no difference between the two types of DPS here because you don't really need to reload a bat. Speaking of, the scout's bat hits for 35 damage a swing, meaning it puts out a mean 70 damage per second. This also goes for the Sandman and the Candy Cane as well. The Boston Basher, with its bleed damage going, has a damage output of 78, while the Rap Assassin, with its bleed effect, is doing 42 damage per second. Then, my personal favorite melee here, the Sun on a Stick, outputs 52 damage per swing, but against burning targets, sees a spike up to 156 DPS. The Atomizer hits for 30 damage a swing, meaning it throws out a mad 60 damage per second. And finally, probably the most powerful melee here, the Fan of War hits for a nasty 18 damage per second. Which means, when this bad boy is crit boosted, it's swinging for 54 DPS, only 16 below our stock bats. And I think that's everything. Huh, that went quicker than I thought it would. Uh, I just want to reiterate that these numbers are not indicative of whether a weapon is good or not. Everything here is white room theory crafting. But I had a ton of fun putting this video together and I really hope that you've enjoyed it. Like usual, if there's anything in TF2 you would like to see broken down, leave a comment down below. I love seeing what you guys have to say. But with that, I hope you have a great day and peace out.